My name is Dave Goodwin. I'm half the team that made SCORME, which is a analytics plugin for WordPress. Um, if you want to follow our adventures with this, you can do so on Twitter. SCORME comes from, um, well, I wanted a score, kind of a snapshot of how the website was doing. So that's where the name SCORME comes from. You can download this as a slide share deck. You can download it at that address. I'll put that up at the end so uh, you don't have to write it down right now. So this is um, part of it. <laughs> That's the plugin right there, score me. And what it does is it creates a snazzy daily report after pulling information from Google, your Google Analytics and Moz accounts by API. There's the Moz information down there. It's completely automatic. The only thing you have to do after you install it and set up, which is a three-step process, is to click the SCORME um, name underneath the, the gear icon, and it generates the report. Okay. The other thing it does is, if you're, you know, if you don't get into WordPress every day, you can have the thing email the report to you, so you get it in uh, on your phone or in Gmail or whatever so you can enjoy analytics with your coffee like I do. Right? So as to the report itself, up at the top, it's got kind of a summary of what's going on. Right now, we have it set up to just present your week. That can be changed, you know, depending on the feedback of the users. Maybe people want it on a monthly basis. I don't know. We'll have to see how it goes. Maybe we can put a trend line in behind that. Um, gives you your top countries, couple, your top three countries. Down below, you can see where the visitors are coming from. And this is all pulled right from Google Analytics. It matches what's in your Google Analytics. Over there, desktop, mobile, and tablet. Mobile, of course, is really important these days. So um, yeah, the reason it looks the way it does is because I needed a tool like this. So as they say, you, when you're making something, scratch your own itch, and that's exactly what this is. Down below, I've got the top 10 pages um, for this website. And as I said, we've got Moz down here. You've got the Moz rank, domain authority, and the equity links down below. What so, is Moz? Huh? What is Moz? Moz is, it's, um, Moz, remember page rank from Google? Do you remember? OK. Moz kind of crawls the web, and they assess the importance of your website and your link profile and all that. It's a very, uh, it started out as an SEO company, but now it's kind of gotten off into the more analytical side of things. But they basically, you know, evaluate your website. And it's important for you to know what this is so you can judge where you stand against other uh, websites that are in your space. Advertisers, now that Google can, can their page rank and moved it off into the sunset, Advertisers seem to want to know what your Moz details are uh, in order for them to even work with you. But I didn't care about that. I just want to know how I was doing and how many equity links I had. Links are important still. OK, who would? Equity links is not a Moz. It looks like it's plan, where it is, plan biz or? Huh? Equity links is not a Moz. Equity links is a Moz. Yeah. Everything below the squiggle comes from the Moz API. Everything above it comes from the Google API. Um, if it depends, I don't know. I don't know yet. I don't know. Two, there's two answers to that. If enough people want it, and if it's technically possible, because what you can get from the API differs from what you can get on the web interface. Yeah. So who it helps? It helps. It's an automation tool. It helps digital marketers, site admins, and SEOs. It's best for sites that have some level of minimal traffic, like 50 or 100 a day. And there's no technical reason for that. But let's face it, do you want to get an email every morning that says you had two visitors to your site? Probably not, right? What's that? What did you write it in? It's PHP. Yep. Um, oh, yeah, I forgot to tell you. I'm one half of the, um, the, the team here. My partner does the LAMP side, Linux, Apache, my SQL, and PHP. And I do the product development side. It's a virtual team. 
So he's far away from New York City, he can't come tonight. Um, so that's it, yeah, it's written in PHP. All right, so how did it get started? It, it's by accident, pretty much. I have an aviation website. I own a small plane, and, uh, and I wrote a blog post a couple years ago. I've had this site up, WordPress site, for a couple years. And um, are you familiar with a tool called SEMrush? Anybody? Yeah, it's a way, it, it's a tool you can look at your key, at keywords in. And I just put my domain in there, and it said I was ranking number one in organic search for a particular expression. And it also told me that Google, through AdWord, cost of airplane insurance and its variations. And it also said that Google was charging eight or nine bucks per click, right? So, you know, remember greed is good, right? So um, I figured, hey, maybe I can monetize that page. Um, not with Ad AdSense, but with like approaching people about that. And at the time, I was only using Stack Counter to just see how many people were coming through the site. I really didn't have any kind of grasp. I'm not a professional digital marketer. I didn't know what was going on with the website. So I go over to, to um, Moz here to see what's going, you know, what Moz shows is going on. One of Webmaster Tools, and I would go up to Google Analytics. I open Google Analytics, and it's like, no, I, don't, I have no desire to learn this. It's very too complicated, right? It's a time sink, and I'm, that's not my job. So I took some screen captures of these pie chart and, and bar chart and that sort of thing, and the, and. I asked Alex, my partner, can we make this, right? Can we make it? And here's what I want to do. Th that's the original um, screen capture thing I kludged together in Photoshop. And um, look, what we wanted to do was make it one page, make it a WordPress plugin, and I'll explain why later. Uh, optional email, mobile friendly, automatic, because that's what automation tools do. And I wanted no web no login so people could be able to get the report just by going to a web page, right? Right now the way it works is in the, in the admin, when you do your setup, it keys off the email address that's in the settings, the general settings, right? Not in the users. So you just can't pick a user to send it to. It's wherever, whoever's in the settings, that's what it goes to. Right now, we might change that. Um, However, that might not be the person, or you might want additional people to see the report without going into the admin. So to have a standalone page, like a WordPress private page, uh, that would be beneficial. So that's on the horizon. Long story short, yes, we can make it. You can see he did a pretty good job of making it true to the, the mock-up that I did here in, Word, in uh, Photoshop. All right, so why a WordPress plugin? It's great testing ground. It's a huge user base. It's like 24% market share. Does anybody know if that's all websites or just English? No? Yeah, it's huge. Anyway, um, great for getting feedback. People let you know pretty quickly if it sucks or if there's something you don't like. Um, and it's great for developing a support system, right? Once, pe once things start coming in, you have to feel that and respond to people who are using it. It's developer friendly and there's no infrastructure costs. Okay, so here's, here's how we uh, approached it. We started on March 3rd, and after 30 days, we had a working prototype that spit out a PDF report instead of the current version, which is all HTML. And we stopped, and we did a pretty big pivot. And that was because I said, all right, well, you know, this looks pretty cool. What if it gets traction? What happens then? Um, so I thought, well, where do I want it to be in three years and in one year? And that's going to affect the business model and the infrastructure, right? So there are, there's a couple of different business models. There's free. There's freemium, which you were talking about. Don't throw any eggs at me. I'm just, you know. <laughs> then there's subscription. You know, that's available in WordPress, too. Akismet uses that, right, for, for um, business customers. Right? And then you can just move off WordPress altogether someday and do SaaS if, if you're um, bold and have the resources. So some of the obstacles we had to overcome. Nobody, we didn't know the API syntax for Google or Moz, right? It's, it, so we had to, I, I took that upon myself to learn that, and I provided, you know, the, what the API elements were to generate the specific parts of that report. Um, we didn't know how to make the charts. What you get back from Google and Moz is data. You don't get pictures back. So we used something called JP Graph, 
which is a pretty cool tool to make automatically generate those reports. That's an open source product too. Wanted to keep the load times down because the way it works now is uh, we move some of the processing off uh, some of the functionality out of the plugin onto our server. So there's some traffic that's exchanged between the server and the plugin, right? The plugin does, mo the uh, server does most of the heavy lifting and what it does is it, it takes all the, gets all the information that's going to constitute the report. It makes it into one file. All the images are encoded with base64 and then it just sends one file to the plugin and the plugin actually renders the report. What that does is it saves a lot of HTTP requests to, to pull in images because you know how HTTP works one at a time, it's, right? So it cuts down on overhead and speeds up load times. Had some bugs with WordPress time zones. Um, this thing fires off at 12.05 in the morning in your local time zone all around the world and it wasn't doing that so he wrote some PHP to fix that. The report didn't render right in email clients like Gmail. Um, so we pretty much abandoned ship on that and we just take the, we were going to do some slick, you know, responsive design, but it didn't work out. You ever seen a PNG in Gmail? It's got the black background. It's just nasty, right? Um, had some issues with report generation timeouts when the server is trying to communicate with Google or with the plugin. If it went too long, it would blow up. So we worked through that one. And uh, third party data integrity issues. I'll talk to you about that in a minute. Then sometimes you just say, all right, we've done enough, we're getting tired, we just need to ship this thing right now, and we're going to put off the mobile responsive design for that, that private page that I talked about until later. Any questions so far? Um, I've got a question. But is it taking off of an existing Google account? Yeah, so, so yep. Repeat question. Yeah, oh, yeah. she wants to know, is it, is it, Link to an existing Google account, and the answer is yes. Uh, I didn't put the settings page up here, but there's three, three soon to be two steps to set up. When, when you come to the setup page, you're going to ask to get an access token, and what that does is it authenticates the domain you, that, that's currently installed on to a Google Analytics property, right? And you go through the process, and it says, oh, yeah, I see it. You're, you're definitely, you have a property in Google Analytics, so we're okay. Uh, and then you're done. So can you then control it through your Google Analytics account, like putting in all the different settings that you want? We're going to talk about that. Yeah, yeah. That's actually the next part of this. For Moz, originally everybody had to get their own Moz keys and join the Moz community. But then I spoke to Moz and I said, hey, you know, the way it works on a business level is in their sales funnel, they have certain, you sign up for as a community member at Moz and you use their API key and they expect you to like progress through the funnel. Well, if 5,000 people sign up for that just to use this and they don't care about Moz, it's going to screw up their metrics. So we're just going to use one set of keys and you won't even see that. And Moz, what, we're going to use one set of analytics keys for Moz. It won't even be part of the setup. Moz gets its data on your websites ir irrespective of what you're doing. There's nothing. You know, you don't have to do anything. Right, but it may not be, it'll, it'll add it to the crawl if you, by doing this, if it's not already doing it, right? It'll what? It'll add it to its crawl if it's not already doing that. Yes. Okay. Well, uh, let's see. No, no, that's independent of that. If, if, if you're not in there yet, it's just going to come back and show okay. this stuff down. Well, it, it, it would show zero, you know, zero domain authority, no links to your site. Okay, so data integrity was the next one. And this ties into the question where, you know, can you manipulate what's on the report through adjusting Google Analytics? And the answer is yes, and you, sometimes you want to. As the face of the product, and, and probably having a lot of business users, um, they're going to look to us for weirdness, right? What's, what's wrong with this? So here we have, um, a low traffic website and all of a sudden it spikes up to near 100. Well, that's referrer spam. You all know what that is? Bots, when you, when you put your Google Analytics JavaScript on a site, right, it's got a unique identifier. People in other countries just go through those identifier like they're dialing in a telephone book, right? So they'll 
and what that does is Google says, hey, somebody, somebody hit my unique identifier. That's a page view or a visit. They never, the bot never even came to your site. They're just causing Google to, to uh, do this. So what happens is it shows up in Google Analytics as coming from somewhere, like um, you know, for webmasters.org is one of them. Uh, the buttonsforwebsites.com, that's another pretty famous one. So the webmaster looks in the analytics and says, oh, wow, buttons for websites linking to me and clicks on it. And it's, it's just a scam to drive traffic to these websites that are in your logs, in your analytics, right? So you got to clean that out. Now, we, we don't manipulate or even save any of the data from the websites. We just collect it from the API, put it in the package, and send it right back to the plugin, OK? So we, we have no way to like smooth this stuff out. And there are, all, there are privacy implications to doing that, too, and security infrastructure that's needed. So um, basically, you, what we're going to do is just educate people when you're using the product. We'll show you how to go into Google Analytics and add a filter like I did here that eliminated this stuff. You can't do it through HT Access, by the way. If you think you're going to try that, forget it. It's not going to work, because they just keep changing where they're coming from. Oh, you're flagging that as spam, as suspected spam. Yeah, that's spam. It's definitely spam. Well, I mean, but you're yep. also adding the, the flag, not circle or No, 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 no. Oh, okay. See, uh, what so, we would say is, you, if you see something like that, right. um, here's what you do to fix it, right? Because we, we can't go into somebody's, we could, but we're, that's not, not what we're here to do. We're going to go into your Google Analytics account and fix it for you. We'll sh tell you what to do, maybe make a video of how to fix it, but we can't fix that. No, no, I'm saying you, you might flag it as suspicious, or we think this might be uh, yeah, we could. a spam. We could do that. Right. Yep. And go watch our video. Which helps, you know, whatever. But right. you're going to know because you get weird things like not okay. set, right? And this is actually aimed at digital marketers and webmasters. So they're, they're kind of in the loop on this stuff, and they know what's going on. All right, so the tools we use to make this thing are there. We use the Amazon Web Services uh, to take care of the server part. We use Bitbucket as our code repository. If you don't know what that is, it's like GitHub. Why not GitHub? Bitbucket's free. <laughs> free. Free, for now. And, um, and that's it. So what I hope you'll do is, it's, right, it, it's about a week away from being submitted to WordPress. It's free, by the way, right? Um, it's about a week away. I hope you'll download it and try it. If you're interested in web analytics and you have enough traffic to warrant installing it, and then give some feedback. Let us know, you know, what, what's a waste of time on this report? What's working? How can we improve it? Uh, that sort of thing. That's contact information. Um, if, you just follow, if you want to follow me on Twitter, obviously I'll send out a tweet when it's ready to roll. Or you can go to the website and click the orange button and add yourself to our email list. And I'll send you an email through MailChimp when it's, um, when it's live in the WordPress plugin directory. One thing about that, for some reason, it, when you sign up, it's one of these opt-ins for the email. It takes about a half an hour for it to actually get to your inbox to uh, acknowledge it. So that's score me. Any questions? So the best case, what do you hope for this? What do you hope to have this result for you? Um, basically, the well, I don't know. We'll have to see if it gets some traction. Yeah, there's always the premium model, right? I mean, every, there's a guy, a pretty famous plugin, Yoast SEO. He's he's hugely successful using that. The the main, oh, I use it on my site. The, the main. What was the name of it? Yoast, Y-O-A-S-T, you know, SEO. It's, a, it's an SEO plugin. It, it allows you to customize your titles and do on-page SEO things. Anyway, they, you know, he's got a lot of great stuff in the plugin for free, but then if you want, you can buy a premium version that does some things with Google Analytics different from this. But there's always that. But again, it's mainly just... Mainly, the reason we're doing this is to see, does it get any uptake? Do people want it, right? It's a very low risk way to find out if your business you know, is valid, if people are going to want it. And then it's also a way to find out if my partner and I can work together 
as a team to get something out the door in a reasonable time frame, which we can. We'd worked together for a couple of years before. Yep. So you said you don't, you don't save any of the data? Right? No. Nope. And in terms of uh, authentication, maybe I this is what, do you have any of our log logging details? How are you authenticating? Are you getting the data from Google Analytics? It's, um, yeah. When you click on get an access token, it brings you to your Google login page. So you're going to log in with your Google Analytics account. And that's. You don't have a login information. You have something to do. Right. It's OAuth, isn't it? Yeah. 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 OAuth. Yep. That's how that works. Moz is just going to use our API keys. You, the, you don't have to do anything. What time frame are you showing? That what time frame? What? I'm sorry. What time frame of the analytics are you showing? It's a week right now, but you know, that's subject to change. I wouldn't mind. Personally, after we got this far, I thought it would be kind of cool to add a trend line, like a 90-day trend line behind that, just something bigger, a month. But it depends on what people ask for. We don't want to put any more into it until people start, you know, they call it the product market fit. We want to know what, what do people want before we put the time into it. I'm sorry. Can people save the data from week to week? No. Nope. You can save it, but we don't save it. Yeah. Yeah. You, well, you, you can save the report. Yeah. I want to do a historical analysis. No, you'd have to go. You'd have to go into Google Analytics to do that. Yeah. And the report's just a PNG, right? The report is a HTML page. What did it look at? Uh, so, uh, uh, these these elements here are, are well, they were PNGs. Okay. Now they're GIFs. Okay. Yeah. Other uh, tools to, I mean, extension. Hey, who's your partner? How do you find him or her? My partner, I started working with him on Odesk about four years ago. And. You found him, he found you, or? I found him. I, I, that aviation site I talked about, I wanted to, I had this brilliant idea of building a better mousetrap. And he built a wonderful mousetrap, and we worked well together, and it cost about five grand, and it tanked, right? Nobody cared. Everybody was happy with the mouse traps they already had. So after that, I said, you know what? I'm never doing that again. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll do it like this, and we'll get people to actually, if 50,000 people use this on a free basis, I think it's fair to assume that, all right, people are digging this thing. I mean, active users, right? Then we'll put money into it. Not before that. I would add one thing. Uh, so for businesses, it's very important to track their conversions mm. and conversion goals. So that's one thing that I would love to see here. Uh, for example, how many people click on the product page uh, from all the web uh, from all the visitors? Right. Uh, or conversion goals can be different. Uh, there are different conversion goals. Maybe probably to incorporate everything will be very hard. But maybe the simplest ones, just uh, how many people gone through, for example, come to a home page and then click on the products page. Right. So that's something that I think, I feel like. Yeah, in the future, what I'd like to do is, one of the thing, one of the risks you, you take with that is, <clears throat> this is like eliminating information overload, right? <clears throat> so you gotta watch that when you start down that path. But what I would like to do is, in the beginning, say, all right, once you set a goal, how many people do you want to go from the top of the funnel to the bottom, and then we'll just measure how you do how you're doing. So it's a true scorecard. That's kind of you know related to the name. So yeah, it accomplishes your your goal but keeps it simple because something like this can get crazy pretty quickly. Yeah, like, I understand <laughs> that. Yeah. Okay. So thank you very much. Again. Yep. Yeah.